Good morning, Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Today is Friday, February 25th. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, guys. And now under the weather with Maddie T. And Maddie D. Hey, everyone. It's your boy, Maddie D. The weather is a high of 36. And a low of 23. Booyah! <laughs> Ryan, we haven't had EPTV in a really long time. Yeah. So you know what we have to check up on? The sports. Yeah. With EPSN. Welcome back to EP. SM. The boys play Springfield tonight. Baseball and softball practices have started. Come out if you're interested. Good job, everyone, and keep up the hard work. Now into this week's segment of Within, Within These, These Walls. Walls. Good morning, EPTV. Today I have here Mr. D, as you all know, who brought over some students from Western Reserve, and I figured we'd go ahead and ask them a few questions, see how their day's going. So, Mr. D, What's up, man? what made you decide to partner with Western Reserve uh, in this school collaboration project? Well, coming into the school, we know we wanted to do uh, build on the student advisory committee, and you know, kind of involve some different schools, get some different ideas. But more importantly, I knew Western Reserve has partnered with us before in previous districts. I knew the principal, I knew the counselor, I knew the superintendent, so I knew it would be an easy match. And they're both looking for the same thing, and I thought that'd be great. We're doing some great things over Western Reserve, we're doing some great things here, so it'd be a great thing to match each up and listen to what they're uh, looking to do for the future. Sounds great. I can't wait to see what uh, Western Reserve is doing that we could possibly bring over here. It's exciting. They've been talking a lot today. It's been fun. Hi. So could you possibly introduce yourself for the audience here? Sure. My name is Mrs. Matus. I'm the 6th through 12th counselor at Western Reserve Middle and High School in Berlin Center. 6th through 12th, that's quite a lot of students. 
Yeah, we're a small school, but it's uh, it, it's quite a range of issues and things to work on each day. Gotcha. It's fun. It's a great place to be. So how do you feel about bringing students into our school today? And what were you trying to hope to accomplish with this visit? I was super excited to bring our kids here today. Um, they are being in Berlin Center in a smaller school. They don't always get to see what's outside of that. Um, so coming into Columbia County and East Palestine, seeing what schools are doing in different places um, was a great opportunity for them. Meet some different kids, um, see what it looks like outside because they, you know, we have one or two that maybe have gone to different districts, but um, most of them have been in Western Reserve their entire lives and we're one building. Um, so they've gone from one hallway to another hallway to a third hallway. So being here has just opened their eyes to see what else there is to offer and how people do things. So it's been, it's been interesting to watch them even the last hour from the morning class that they observed to, to now to see just, it, it, it's exciting for them. Yeah, I mean, so, I, until I got involved with other high school activities, I've mm -hmm. never seen the inside of any other school yeah, building. Right. Just going around here due to different events, I'm like, wow. These are some nice schools. Yeah, right. There's and they, so much more up there. Absolutely, and even just right now before we um, started this interview, their minds are spinning already. They're already talking about what things they can bring back to our school and the ideas that they've seen. And you can just see and feel their excitement. So it's been beneficial already, and we're not even halfway done. That's good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. So I hear you're the principal at Western Reserve. Is that right? Last time I checked, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, I'm actually the principal of the middle school and high school. Yeah, wow. I'm in my fourth year out there, so. Fourth year, that's not too bad. Yeah. Say, is there anything we do here at East Palestine that you would like to implement or take back to Western Reserve? Yeah, I mean, several things. I've been coming out here monthly now for several months, and, you know, for example, what we're doing right now. I think it's an amazing opportunity for kids to really put their artistic talents to use and just prepare them for some real world opportunities when they leave you know high school and regardless of what program they go into post-secondary if they even choose to um, you know on top of that uh, the, the cafe is, is a pretty neat feature to be very honest with you that's something we've been looking at pretty hard uh, trying to find ways to implement it in our school um, I just think it's nice to have a gathering place where kids know to go each morning and you know get some juice water snacks to get through the day so you know, on top of that, uh, the building and trades class where, you know, kids are building dice and doing some amazing stuff with woodworking ability. And it's just, it's, it's fun to get out and see what other schools do when sometimes, you know, I think people are just afraid of change and they think that things just aren't possible until you see someone else doing it and you realize, okay, well, how can we make this happen? Because there's a lot of positivity that surrounds it. You know, and honestly, the advisory council, why we come out here each month, I think it's important that kids have a say. You know, I mean, it, I think for too long, it's all been adults say this, do this, and here's why. You know, I think kids need to be empowered because, again, you invest 13 years of your life to get that diploma at the end of the road, and I think they need to have a say in what goes into the environment, the culture, and, and how to make things better because it's a business of education. We're always looking to improve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's always better to improve, get better, hear what the students have to say. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think people are too afraid to change at times, and that's where I think it's nice to have this collaboration with Mr. D and you know, and other schools, and get the kids out, like Mrs. Meta said, and, and see some of the fun, exciting things going on that we can easily implement back at Western Reserve. Just people need to be willing and, and eager. All right, glad to have you. Thanks for having me. So let's go ahead and ask the Western Reserve students who are visiting us today and their tour guides a few questions as well. So the first question I have for the EP kids, what were you most proud of showing your student visitor today as you went around the school? I definitely think EPTV and the Bulldog Cafe. Oh, obviously those are the, some of the best features <laughs> at the school. Uh, question two, have you learned anything from your visitor that you think we should look into doing here at EP? Uh, well, some of the students were telling me about uh, t-shirt making that they do there. T-shirt making? That would be a cool class. Uh, question three. How interested are you in going into Western Reserve for a day just to see how the school works on a day-to-day -day basis? I think it would be really cool just to see how another school operates. All right. Let's 
let's go ahead and ask our Western Reserve guests here some questions as well. For the first question, I have, what is the best thing about Western Reserve? Or, in other words, what do you enjoy most about your school? How friendly and all respectful all the students are. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Friendly peers is always a big thing to have. Uh, what is your favorite subject in school? And is there a class you like the best? I would have to say English is my favorite subject, and then my favorite class is also English, just due to the, due to the teacher and like the freedom that you have with reading and writing. Oh yeah, I love my English teacher as well, but I hate English as a subject. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question I have here is, what things, if any, do you like best about your visit today? Uh, I had a lot of fun with the psych class, and I hope that we can get it at our school. I enjoyed that class myself. Uh, seeing how we do things here, is there anything you think your administration should try or do at your school? I think that uh, it would be cool if our administration let us have a cafe. Cafe is always a, a good favorite out of the community, and I hope it goes well if you choose to do so. Uh, the final question I have here is, have you ever in, have you enjoyed your day here at East Palestine High School? And was it helpful to see how things work in a different district? Yeah, I did enjoy the day here. Um, the students here are really welcoming and polite, so that's good. Um, but I did think it was helpful, um, as I can bring some things, new things to my district, my school specifically, uh, especially with my administration. They're being very open and welcoming to new ideas, especially Mr. Sonner, so that's great. Well, that's great to hear, especially, I'm sure, these people back here would be glad to hear that they're, that they're doing a great job. And with that wraps up my interview for Western Reserve. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and have a great time here. And I'll see you all guys in Today in History. It's pretty chilly, but guess what time it is? It's time for Out and About! Hi there! Just wanted to go ahead and bring you out here to go ahead and talk about the Battle of Verdun. Which, if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'll explain it all later. All you need to know right now, this very moment, is that on today, which is... 25th, February 25th of 1916, the, the Germans, actually, in World War I, just so happened to walk in the back door of a French-controlled fort and just take it over. Absolutely zero resistance. There was nobody home. It's great. I, 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 thought I, I thought I shut that door. How'd you get in here? No, door was wide open. Just, just left it wide open. Well, what is this? Some kind of shameless plug to show off this new computer room we put together and these fancy lights we have back here for some reason? No. Sellouts! Let's go talk about the Battle of Verdun. So the Battle of Verdun as a whole took place from February to December. A whole ten months, which sure doesn't seem like that long, but if you take into consideration like the Revolutionary War often had battles that lasted a day or two, or even any other war throughout history usually takes about a day or two at most. Ten months! That is a long time. A really long time. Being such a gigantic battle, there were so many estimated casualties, with a total somewhere around 700,000. The French totaled 400,000, the Germans 350,000, and most say about 300,000 died. So Germany thought it would be a great idea how they're going to win this war. They're going to win through attrition, which is basically people stuck in the mud as they're 
you know, trying to fight. Nobody can move and everybody's just shooting each other. Sounds great on paper, but if you've studied anything about military history, you know that is probably the worst idea they could possibly come up with. Verdun on a map basically looked like this, and Germany saw that there were plenty of roads going through that area that would be incredibly helpful for them to have, whether it was damaging France or helping themselves, it helped either way. And it basically went up like a hill, and it was a big vantage point. So naturally, they wanted it. So while the French were all busy trying to figure out how they were going to fight the Germans, the Germans were busy fighting them. However, they weren't necessarily fighting because they walked up to the fort, which is a French name. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I'm not even going to try because I know I'll butcher it. It starts with a D. Go ahead and look it up. Feel free. They walked right in because they're going to, yeah, we're going to take the fort. They walk in. Nobody was there. Not a single French troop. So they walked in. No one's here. For its hours, I guess, because no resistance. Not a single bullet was fired, not a single life was lost. Which is great for the Germans. Now the French are starting to panic because that was a very, very important strategical importance fort. Now, France, towards the end of this battle, wanted it to be over, as does anybody. And so they took what they could, which was everything, and they put it into one large gamble to try and finish it finally. Which they did. Of course, that's speaking fairly vaguely, but this is supposed to be a short video. As you know, they won the battle, they won the war, and it really did pay off. Alright, that's our oversimplified version of the Battle of Verdun. Hope you guys enjoyed this week, and hopefully we will be back next week. And at least now, of course, you know what would have happened if today, this year, was 1915. 16. 16, 1916. Back to you, Brock. Oh, hey, you're here. Hey, back to you, buddy. Back to me. Yeah. The studio. Thanks, me and another shirt. Wait, where was Tristan and all of that? Where is everybody? That's all for this week. We'll see you next week. Catch you on the flip side. Peace, love, and go Bulldogs.